So first of all, I wanted to show you that although this, this image comes from the same cropped larger image, um, we can have different problems. For example, here in the epithelial cells, there is a lot of this non-specific binding. Um, there's also something that looks like, like some plasma perhaps that um, got into the lumen of the alveoli from this rupturing blood vessel. And that could be a problem. Um, there is an area where we have uh, a really uh, nicely stained K67 positive cells. There is another artifact of the plasma and there are some positive cells here. So we will be doing cell detection on these guys. And um, to make this exercise as um, impactful as it should, be, you will try a couple of different cell detections until you find that you have the right choice, okay? So to make my life easier, I'm gonna close those viewers. So I have just one. I can save the data. The only thing I did is I applied color deconvolution that was the default. Um, and I am actually gonna change that color deconvolution a little bit. Uh, it might be that it's not really great for this sample. So if I press two, I'm getting pretty good um, hematoxin. Um, so that, that DAB image is looking pretty nicely, but there is quite a bit of background that I would like to get rid of. So I will try to find an area that has some background pixels, some examples of hematoxin, some examples of ES and uh, uh, DAB and estimate stain vectors. I'm going to match the current model values. And I'm going to call it something specific. You can leave it estimate, but I'm going to call it my path stain vector. Bring our analysis pane. So if I now inspect that, I may have improved a little bit, but I'm, I would like to get this a little cleaner. So I'm going to point to the background and go to image tab, and I'm going to say, hey, this is my background. It's going to change the standard conversion a little bit, not much. OK. Um, point that I wanted to make is that in your classic clinical workflow, you're actually gonna be going through a couple of steps of the same command quite often. So let's try to optimize an H score measurement and you can choose any image that you want for that. Let's do it in a small region of interest initially. Analyze cell detection, positive cell detection. Um, Let's let's try with default settings and see what what we got. I'm gonna fill my detections. Um, disappointingly, this looks very good, but I'm gonna try to make it more realistic um, by you know struggling a little bit so. I'm going to change my request pixel size to something smaller. Okay, so some of the cells that were um, grouped together are now a little bit um, more um, separated. Um, let's try to apply this on an area where um, cells are more dense, like this one over here. Okay, and I'm I'm seeing that some of the cells are still clumped together. So I'm going to drop my sigma. Now I'm losing some of the cells, maybe going between. So I'm, I'm actually not happy. In this case, I'm getting um, quite a bit more of a false positive. So I would raise my threshold or um, my um, first positive DAB state. Mm. 
Now, I want to try it on the whole image because perhaps those are not very representative regions. So I'm going to go to objects, delete all objects. Yes, delete everything. I want to create a full image annotation because for cell detection command to work, we need an annotation. Um, I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to go to objects, select annotations. I had it selected. Why did I do that? The only reason for that was that I wanted to have this command to appear in my workflow. And that's because I'm trying to create a list of tools that will be used in our workflow. And I'm going to tell you in a moment why this is important. But once you have done um, your run on the full, um, full image, with the positive sound detection. You want to have the commands clear object, create full image an annotation, and select object by class. And that script is select annotations. You want to hit create script. You're going to have this um, welcoming window that's not scary at all, that has nothing here that would be intimidating. I don't know why. I have no idea. But something about this workshop reminds me of a concert. OK? And I keep my brain wants to go back, maybe to this thing concert that I recently was on. And it was amazing. And maybe that's that's what, what it is. But I, I think in those categories, and I cannot take it away from my head. I'm sorry. Um, but this is for, from samples to knowledge to any 23 La, La Jolla set list. Um, because the following songs will be played in that script. We're going to set the stage. We're going to do some house cleaning. We're going to create annotations. We're going to make sure that annotation is selected. And then we're going to detect the cells. Uh, support band is called your comments. And uh, it has this, this, this funny name. There are two slashes in front of your command. And a special guest is file save as. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's have a look at our script editor window. And I'm gonna read to you the commands that I have. You, ha you may have slightly different order, and I'm gonna tell you what each of those commands is doing. So the first two set, the, the first two commands are setting the stage. The first command, set image type, instructs QPAT that this is brightfield age that image. Automatically, QPAT will do some color deconvolution. That's called age that default. That's your second line in your script. Correct? How many of you see that? Good. Now, there is another line that's called age that default. And there is the line that co that's that's uh, named my faf stain vectors. Your line is going to be called different. Um, it might be age uh, estimated, but you if you've done that stain vector um, um, finding, you will have that line. Now the first two lines are not really necessary anymore because the last command that I've used, the last command that I was satisfied with was the last one on the list. And I made a mistake that I ate S from that, uh, from that command. So I'm correcting it. So then I did a bunch of positive cell detection. And at the end of the day, I wasn't happy with any of those until my last set um, detect cells positive cell detection. So the the thing is that if you're looking for something right and you have 35 places to look for it, 
and you found your keys in place number 17, you don't go to number 18 because you found what you're looking for. All of those previous commands are commands that are that were not too satisfying. So I can delete them. Now, I told you that there's going to be some housekeeping. Um, but housekeeping or house cleaning is removing all of the objects. This is not strictly necessary, but if you're working on an image where you have some annotations, some objects are already there, for a script to work the best, it's best if you start from a clean slide. So this is cleaning. Image. Now we need, after that command is done, and this one we also don't need, is to create full image annotation because QPAT needs an annotation to do a subsequent command. Then if you do it by hand, right, that annotation is by default selected. If you do it through a script, it is not. Therefore, there is this command select annotation. And, and Mike is like, mm, it depends. Is it? Yeah, true. The true means it's. Oh, OK. We, we so we don't need that. So if you put false in there, I think. Yes. So I'm always learning something new about it. And this is such a simple command, right? Um, and then my last command is to detect the cells. So File, save as. Well done. Now, this might be a little bit premature because we don't know if it actually works. So we're going to go to um, run. And what we should see is that this annotation briefly disappears and there are some objects are being created in the background. There are definitely some objects are being created in the background. And um, if, if something like there are a couple of things that could have gone wrong, um, Maybe I didn't have that clear objects. Um, um, would it create a second annotation if I didn't do that? Yeah. So let's say we didn't have that. And then it would essentially create two annotations because it wouldn't necessarily delete the first one. Okay. So this stage is something that's absolutely critical, right? You have to start with a clean image and make sure that it actually does what you want before you apply it for your project. Clearing out all those objects is a very standard thing for a script because you want to start from scratch. But this is why I really encourage people to have a separate project when they're creating training data yes. for their uh, pixel classifiers, and stuff like that. It's very easy to run for project across your entire data set and it's gone. Unless you've backed up your project folder, there is no undo button in QPath for run for project. So try to keep all that training data and annotation that you may want to go back and just like add one more little bit of training data to make something a little bit better. But if you run one of these scripts for projects, it might all be gone. Even if you duplicated your image and you're like, oh, I'm never going to run anything on that image. But then you just click the all images button and ran it. All that training data is gone. So separate projects for your training data and then just copy that classifier over 
to the project where you want to run it. Not that that's ever happened to me. No, no, no. Uh, that's absolutely not the reason. If I'm working on something, I have like five copies in the pro of the project folder. You can just copy and paste those project folders, okay? Um, or zip. Yeah, or zip. So now let's just double check. Let's make sure that this result is satisfactory. And then I'm going to go to run and run for project. We have four of our images available. We're going to add them all. And we're going to hit run. So we will refresh that image. And now if we switch between this one and this one, for example, you will notice that the data are already there. We applied a workflow across all images in my project. Qpath is great at applying those things, but it's very important that you go in and you inspect the work that has been done because there are probably going to be some artifacts. And if you didn't start with blank fourth, you probably will find that there is a lot of artifacts because not all of those cells are K67 positive. And, and, and that was done on purpose, okay? How many of you started with image one? How many of you started with image two? How many of you started with image three? How many of you started with image four? I sh Next time I'm gonna spice it up a little bit and I'm gonna divide into groups, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> So your results will be different, right? Um, but let's see if perhaps similar trends will, will show up across. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So we're gonna go to measure, export measurements. We're gonna add all of our available um, files to the selected group. Um, our output file will choose to be, um, we can call it something a little bit more informative than measurements. Um, maybe H score in okay, I67 long. I'm gonna save that. I want to save annotations. Sorry, I want to. What what kind of data do you think we should be exporting? About images, annotation, detections, cells, or TMA cores? So it kind of depends what you want. Um, all of those answers are to some degree true, but my goal for this experiment would be to know what is the proportion or the age score in that given annotation. Okay, so we're gonna select annotations. My separator can be comma, and I'm going to click populate. And in here, you would typically export more columns than what I'm going to ask you to export. But let's just get the image and the age score and click export. Now that was successful. Remember how to find your project from the projects tab. Right click, open directory project. And we have 
our data here. Then um, the results from our um, experiment yesterday that show you the response of 70 people that responded um, to the form um, were um, with a few exceptions. Um, <laughs> um, we can see that you actually, although using very different settings, right? There was absolutely nothing that we told you exactly to do. Um, you kind of tray is the same kind of response. The values are different, but the trend is very similar. Um, so this is something that I like about um, doing image analysis, even if it's imperfect, um, it usually is recreating um, a trend that other person found in the data if applied systematically. 